How long does it take to get SSL in Rocket League? A few months ago, Wayne Pilkin made a video answering this question. He gathered responses from over a thousand different players. And today I want to watch the video through for the first time myself, react to it, and hopefully add a little bit of perspective from my experience after coaching thousands of hours of this game. By the end of this video, you'll know not just the magic number of hours that it usually takes to get SSL, but I'll also be talking about how you can figure out if you're on track to get there in time for your rank. Also, since you guys come to me for improvement, I usually never ask this, but I want you to go to the comments below and comment your rank and in-game hours. I think it'd be interesting to see if your responses on my channel match up to the responses that Waiton found from the data on his. Let's get started. All right, time to react. As of this month, December 2022, by the time a Rocket League player reaches the rank Gold 2, on average, they'll have played 1,052 games. If that player chooses to continue grinding, once they reach Platinum 3, they'll have more than doubled their games played at 2,649. Continuing up the ladder after that, at Champion 2, they'll again have more than doubled their matches played at 6,684. I'm going to pause here. I, lo I love what Wayton's doing here because I think most players, probably including you, maybe not, don't understand the gap and how hard it becomes to rank up as you get a higher rank. So look at what he did here with how he graphed the ranks. A lot of people think, oh, to go from gold to plat to diamond to champ, it's just a straight line, right? I just get better over time. No, it's increasing difficulty all the way up. So however long it takes you to get from gold to plat, you know, let's say it's you know, 1,500 games, plat to diamond is then going to be 2,000 games, diamond to champ is then going to be closer to 3,000 games, and this only gets more steep as you go up. So the lower rank you are, the faster you can expect to progress. And also what this means is like, don't be upset if your improvement slows. It's not you, that's how the game is designed. That's how Rocket League made the ranking system, right? It takes longer the higher rank you get. That's just how it is. It's an exponential increase. When looking at all the ranks on an even timeline, the halfway point to reaching SSL is Platinum 2. But because of that exponential increase in time it takes to rank up, the true halfway point to reaching SSL is actually all the way up around Grand Champion 1. You're only three ranks away, but you're just now getting halfway there. That's insane. And that's, that's exactly the point. I mean, think about that. If your goal is to get SSL, getting Grand Champ is halfway there. So what this means is if you want to get like better at this game, especially as you climb higher in the ranks, you can't rely on just the ranked ladder to be telling you if you're good or not. You know, there are so many players like that get to champ, champ two, champ three, GC one, and they get really frustrated because they're not improving in rank. And you might have improved tons in skill, but if the only way that you measure whether you improve or not is your rank, you're going to burn out before you even get SSL and you're, you're going to quit because you think you're not making progress. So whether you're plat watching, uh, hopefully this makes you feel better because hey, you could get diamond in not too long. But if you're GC watching, know that, yeah, even if you've been playing for the past three months and you feel like you've improved, but your rank hasn't, odds are you probably have improved a ton and it's just going to take another month or two for you to see that rank up. That's just how it is. Earlier this week, I put out a survey asking all of you guys a bunch of different questions about your stats in game, your favorite training tools and stuff like that. I made the same kind of video a couple years ago, but I decided to do it again to see if anything has changed in those two years and to ask even more questions, including how many hours does it take to get to every rank in Rocket League, which we'll get to later. Some of the results. Love that, Wayne. Save it, save it, saving the, the best answer for the end of the video. He knows ended what up doing. being the same as two years ago, while others actually changed a bit. Last time, I calculated SSL as being 17,542 games, and this time it turned out to be 17,586. Literally within 50 matches of each other, so I think it's safe to say it's not really any easier or harder to rank up to SSL after two years. Interesting. Do I think this is right? Probably not. I mean, as much as I'd like to believe that this is true, even though the amount of games that Wait and Found might be the same, the thing you have to understand is that over time, the skill gap in Rocket League has grown just as fast, if not faster, than it's ever grown before. So yeah, while it might take you the same amount of games to catch up, the amount of mechanics that you need to get SSL now is 
twice as high as the amount of mechanics you needed to get SSL two years back. So with this data, it's like, yes, this might be the amount of games that you need. If I had to say, I mean, just from my experience playing at higher level lobbies, I would be shocked if the skill of an SSL today is equal to the skill of an SSL two years ago. I think it's actually harder now, but we'll keep watching. Let me tell you about the official coaching sponsor of my channel called the Grand Champ Bootcamp. The Grand Champ Bootcamp is the most comprehensive coaching program in Rocket League designed to take intermediate ranked players, maybe like you watching, up to Grand Champ in 12 weeks time. This is the only coaching program geared specifically towards intermediate ranked players, which is why new students who enroll take a benchmark test and are assigned a private coach to work with for a truly personalized 12 weeks. So if you're hard stuck and sick of going at the improvement process alone, DM the Grand Champ Bootcamp help account on Discord with the keyword GC to learn more about enrolling. I'll have their partner account linked first thing in the description below. Otherwise, back to the video. Unfortunately, as always with these surveys, there's a certain group of people that I like to call data haters who purposely submit misinformation in an attempt to sabotage my experiment. Normally, this would be detrimental to my sanity as I'd have to sift through <laughs> thousands of responses all on my own. But fortunately, a friend of mine has a master's degree in data analytics, so he helped me filter out all those lying responses in just a couple minutes. So I just wanted to say all of you who put 69 for every single answer, you wasted your time. Thank you. By the way, the <laughs> nice. So Wayton mostly silenced the trolls, but I'm sure Wayton knows this. He probably just didn't mention it in his video. The fact that this was a complete self-response survey means that some of these numbers might be a little off, but we'll talk about it at the end of the video. The rank that did lie the most on the survey was the Platinums. Honestly, I can't say I'm surprised about that one. On top of that, a whopping 10% of YouTube lied in the survey, so I'd like at least 10% of the comments on this video to be a formal apology about that. An age All right, so Plats lied the most. I don't know if I believe that either. I feel like Plats lie the most, but then second most? Champs. Everybody knows. Champ twos. Everybody knows that. Diamonds, GCs, even golds? Love all you guys. Plats, champs. You know, I have a lot of plat champ viewers. Um, if you're plat or champ watching, you got to get out. If you're champ, you might want to consider deranking down to diamond. And if you're plat, yeah, you should just probably try to rank up to diamond too. Yeah, that, that, that about tracks. Who's worse, plats or champs? Comment below. The old question that a lot of people have is what platform is easiest to rank up on? Obviously, oh, PC players can have super high FPS, minimal input delay, and even access to workshop maps for training. But how much does that actually help? Well, let's see. Turns yes, so this is a good question. Waiting kind of mentions it here. But if you've never played on PC, the truth is the real advantage to being on PC is not just workshop maps. It's not just FPS. Yeah, workshop maps are nice. Yes, FPS is nice. The main reason being on PC is better is because of input lag. Now, if you don't know what input lag is, input lag is literally the delay between the time you make an action or you, you press an input on your controller, you click a button and the time the game picks it up. And you might not think this is a big deal, but every single high ranked player I've talked to, myself included, no big deal. I'm I've got, I've got high rank too, says that playing ranked with high input lag is almost unplayable past GC. The reason being is because with how mechanical the meta has become, games at the top ranks are much more decided by reaction time and 1v1 play and quick thinking than they are like strategy and positioning per se, right? So like I remember in my road to SSL, even when I was streaming and lagging and I had to deal with input lag because of it, it wasn't any harder for me to win a game at diamond or even champ because I could just position well and make good decisions and that would get me up. But once I started to get to GC1, it became almost impossible to play if my stream wasn't running smoothly or if I was having any lag at all, because at the high ranks, the amount of room you have for error shrinks. So point is, if you're on console and you're like below GC, my recommendation is like, yeah, you can keep playing. It's just going to be just as easy for you to rank up until you get to GC. But once you hit GC1, if you want to continue climbing the ladder, you might want to consider switching to PC. Let's see what the data says, though. Turns out PC players actually do rank up faster, but it's not by much. To get to GC1 on PC, it takes around 9,600 games, but on Xbox, it takes around 10,200. So about 6% faster. It's not too much. But then 
that makes sense because like you get a slight advantage from being on PC. You know, you have workshop maps, you have different training stuff, Bacchus mod, whatever, and you have, you know, faster speeds. So that makes sense. But I think this margin would expand. Like the amount of games it would take you to get SSL if you try to stay on console forever, you would see a big gap between PC and Xbox. So yeah, it looks like you can kind of get away with it. It'll be slight if 6% harder is sort of what the data says. If you want to stay on console, it's not that big of a deal. But if you really want to get better, yeah, it, PC is straight up better. And again, there's about that same amount of difference between Xbox and PlayStation, which I'm pretty sure are considered the same difficulty. So who knows? Maybe even this difference is negligible. Some of you might not know this, but you can actually check a bunch of your stats by going to profile career stats from the main menu. This is the page where I had everyone enter the stats I was interested in. So feel free to compare your own to the averages. All right. So now we're going to go into the stats section match, of the video. per match, it gave us a nice little curve increasing throughout the ranks. It's beautiful how the importance of team play is visualized here as each rank has a higher assist per game than the one below it. Similarly, the saves Platts. had that same pattern Platts where stuff. SSL of course, saves Platts per game stats assists. were three times higher than those in silver, which is pretty insane. Even looking at the individual ranks within each rank set, it was still a nice smooth staircase as you climb. Well, all except for the Platts, which for some reason declined. This could just be a random, weird, inaccurate factor in the results, but I like to believe it's another reason why Platts are the worst rank in Rocket League. Like, what the heck is this? <laughs> So apparently a plat three has worse statistics on average than a plat one, which makes no sense in terms of the rank system. Wayton didn't mention this. I think the reason for this is because of the new placement system. Like when I play Rocket League with a friend or they ask me what they place in, most new players these days are telling me they're placing in like gold three, plat one, plat two. So like it would make sense that to climb the rank, like the, to sort those players out, maybe it would mess up the rank ladder. I, d I don't know. I'm guessing that's why the reason plat is kind of speculative but after that it's literally just if you get better you will rank up the stats are evident if you think you deserve to be champ two and you're diamond two we'll just go into your stats and see if you have the same goals per match as a champ two should and then you'll know if it's your fault or your teammates fault spoiler it's it's probably yours but we goals per game was pretty sporadic i don't know if there's even a pattern here at all i was expecting some sort of takeaway here but the only thing i can really see is that plats had a super high goal per match average which does coincide with the stereotype that plats are obsessed with air dribbles and flip resets but can't even rotate back post properly for demos per match it's pretty cool it's like a flat line for the mid ranks but then it suddenly spikes up at the higher ranks obviously interesting so a cisco study up goals are pretty much flat but demos increase flatline increase that makes sense because i think physical play doesn't really matter until you max out your mechanics and like grand champ one grand champ two is where shadow defense becomes important and the best counter to shadow defense well it, it depends on how they're positioning shadow but if somebody's shadow defending then you can start to do bumps and air dribble bumps if somebody's back post air dribble bumps and bumps don't really work you should just shoot the ball in net um and or bounce dribble and you'll score so this makes sense it's kind of like as people start to shadow defend which is what i see like gc1 gc2 gc3 that's when they get really good at it then you need to start air dribble bumping and bumping which is why which is why i would guess demos go up yeah basically shows you that demos are important but i thought it was interesting how it didn't change much until you really got up there now back to some really useful information. I wanted to see if there was a difference in how fast 2v2 mains ranked up versus how fast 3v3 mains ranked up. I predict you can get SSL faster in 3v3 than you can in 2v2. So in other words, a 2v2 player that's SSL and a 3v3 player that's SSL, I would take the 2v2 player any day on my team. I think they're a better player overall. Um, it's the same thing with like once. Like if you get SSL in 1v1, I think you're a better player than somebody who gets SSL in 3v3. Usually. Ones is hardest, twos is second hardest, threes is easiest. That's my prediction. Turns out there's actually a huge difference between the two. Those who claim to be 2v2 mains reach Grand Champ in about 10,000 matches. Whereas 3v3 mains reach it closer to 12,300. That's a much bigger difference than I thought it would be. Now, this could either be because 2v2 is just an easier mode to rank up in than 3v3, or the 2v2 mains are actually getting better faster. I'm personally more inclined right. to believe the latter. Like, if you think about it, in 2v2, you're getting more time on the ball, and you get punished a lot more than in threes. 
Right. So Waiten basically says in 3v3, on average, it takes somebody 12, almost 13,000 games. Whereas in 2v2, it only takes them 10,000 games. So is it that it's easier to rank up in 2v2 or is it that 2v2 players are improving faster? I mean, if you ask any like high rated ones player as well about this, they'll tell you if you play ones, you improve the fastest, twos, the second fastest, and threes, I guess the least f fastest. It's a word right? That's, weird. That's not to say that you won't improve playing 30s, but it's just your time on the ball in ones is higher, right? So you're spending less of the time in game driving around collecting boost, which is why I think it would take less games overall. It's just a more efficient way to train. Hopefully that makes sense. So like if you purely want to rank up and don't care about sanity, just cue ones and twos. But like, you know, most of us can't do that. So I think that's why we sprinkle in twos and threes. I find that twos is like the nice middle ground where I don't lose my mind, but I'm still improving a lot while I play. Whereas threes is kind of more just like chill with friends, right? Lay, lay back and you know, you're going to have less of an impact in your games, but it's also going to be kind of easier to play. I don't know. It's the same reason why so many of today's pro players were 1v1 mains at one yeah. point. Like you get so much Absolutely. more ball control practice and you get punished for everything. It is extremely tilting, but it's also a lot easier to improve individually when you have less teammates. Also pretty related, there was an interesting trend in people's main game modes as they climb the ranks. There are more 1v1 mains in the lower ranks than ever, but people move away from ones as they climb to the point where 80% of people are twos mains at diamond and champ, but then they finally start to filter into 3v3 by SSL. That actually makes a lot of sense considering the next step after SSL is collegiate or pro play, which is only 3v3, of course. I also asked what training tool. I always preferred 2v2, but that makes sense. And just 2v2, you have more impact in your games. So like, I, I just think it's more enjoyable, right? Will each rank use the most? Either free play, custom training, or none. Down at Silver, it was actually a pretty even split between custom and free play. But free play, of course, becomes the more popular tool pretty quickly. By Grand Champion and SSL, pretty much everyone uses it more. But I wouldn't recommend the same for lower ranked players just because the higher ranks do it. I've always said custom training is where you go to learn and practice new mechanics, but free play is where you go to get them consistent. So it makes sense that high ranked players use more free play since they don't really have many new mechanics to learn. Also, shout out to the slight uptick in SSLs that don't care about training anymore. <laughs> Thought that was funny. Yes, this is so true what Waiton is saying. Just because the pros do it doesn't mean you should. I fully agree with what Waiton is saying about free playing custom training. Custom training is where you go to kind of learn how to ride the bike, you know, learn the new thing with training wheels, right? With are they called training wheels? Yeah, safety wheels. Yeah with training wheels you know if you're trying to learn an air dribble you go into a training pack that way the setup is kind of done for you and you can just focus on learning the individual parts before you get the full thing then once you get to higher ranks so like champ grand champ you know even closer to ssl that's when free play should be your go-to right that's why you see the pros driving around in free play because they already know everything they don't need to go into a training pack to relearn it so yeah low ranks focus on training packs workshop maps higher ranks you can focus more on free play and just speed and consistency with the mechanics you already know if i was lower rank watching this that is one of the biggest things i would take from this data I also asked, what percentage of time do you spend in training? It ended up being pretty level for the low ranks, but a nice increase all the way up to almost 40% at SSL. That's pretty crazy. I'm sure. So 20 minutes of gameplay to five minutes of free play at plat versus 20 minutes of gameplay to eight minutes of free play at SSL. That makes sense. So if you're looking for like what is appropriate for your rank, you know, make sure you're training at least as much as these averages. My recommendation is if you want to improve faster than people at your rank, you can look at double or even triple this ratio, right? So if you're diamond, the average diamond player is spending like 25% of their time in training. If you are diamond, and you want to improve fast, spend 50, if not 75% of your time in training, and you're going to improve as fast as a champ or a GC would. Sure, the higher Q times play a factor into having more training time in that rank, but it still shows you how important it is to train on top of just queuing matches. Just because I was curious, I also asked what your win percentage was, and surprisingly, every single rank had an average win percentage of above 50%. That doesn't really make sense to me on the surface. I don't know how that exact math is supposed to work, but I do know that for every winner in a match, there's also a loser, which means there's got to be people with less than 50% out there, right? There's definitely something I'm overlooking here, but I just don't know what it is. Maybe one of you guys can help me out, but yeah, I thought that was interesting.
Lastly, let's take a look at average hours per rank. I figured a lot of you would be really interested right, in this one. the question everybody so wants to hear. Know. Yeah, the win percentage question is weird. It's probably just because Waiten's audience is, you know, a winning audience, <laughs> right? Like he makes some videos on improvement and education. Um, he, especially he used to make more of them. So like anybody watching Waiten's videos is probably better than just the average casual player. So like 55% win rate might make sense. I don't know. My audience, you guys, maybe you guys have like 60% win rates. I don't know. Or maybe you're on my videos because you have 40% win rates and you need help. Either or, I don't know. Like, am I progressing faster or slower than average so far? Of course, you got to keep in mind that the lower ranks are pretty all over the place because there just weren't as many responses for right, those, especially since only a portion of people even know how to check their actual in-game hours. In case you didn't know, it's different from the time played stat that you can see in-game. That's not the same thing. But anyway, here it is. Pretty here similar is. distribution to the matches played for each rank, which isn't really a surprise. They kind of go hand in hand. All right, pause. Let's take a look. The hours per rank. Yeah, silver, gold, and plat, it basically makes no sense. Like, a silver 3 has 417 hours, whereas a plat 3 has 474 hours. Like, if you look at this, you should start in gold 3, and then you go to gold 1 and gold 2, and then you go to plat 1, and then you go to silver, and then you go back up to plat. Yeah, I think this is just the whole placement system being wacky right now in rocket league but once we get to like plat three that's when these numbers start to make sense so 400 to 800 hours for diamond then 1100 to 1800 hours for a champ then 2k to 4k for gcs gc one two three and then about just under 4.5k hours on average for ssl the average SSL has 4,450 hours. That is a lot. As you can see, the lower ranks are pretty all over the place, same with the higher ones a bit. But where we had the most responses for this question at Diamond and Champ, it follows pretty much that perfect exponential curve that we saw earlier. So yeah. if you were to apply that curve to the entire distribution, then these would be the new numbers. Even though this isn't exactly the data I got for these ranks, I feel like it truly is more realistic. And it's probably what I would have gotten if I had like an infinite number of responses. So if you actually like average these numbers out, but I like that Waiton did that, you can expect to get out of gold after about 300 hours. You can expect to get out of plat after about 600 hours. You can expect to get out of diamond after about 1200 hours and you can expect to get out of champ what this this amazes me after over 2000 hours closer to 2500 hours it takes on average to get gc now see back when i got gc the average time to get there was like and this was before ssl became a thing it was like 700 800 hours 900 hours it was around the 1k mark now it's over two and a half times that which I think just shows how much harder it is to rank up today than it was four years ago. But yeah, take it for what you will. Obviously, there's no exact way to get this perfect, but this is the best that we have to go off of. And I think it's really interesting. So you basically look at this graph, you look at your rank and you look at how many hours you have. And then you say, am I at this rank faster than the average time? Or am I at this rank slower than the average time? I'd be interested to know. Comment below. So that just about wraps it up. Now you can finally see how slow or fast you're progressing compared to everyone else. But just one final request, please don't come to my Twitch chat saying you're plat and you only have 200 hours. You're still plat and you still suck. That's all, bye bye. <laughs> nice, <laughs> I love that, <laughs> I love that ending. Nothing else to say. Go show Waiten's video some love. By the way, I know Waiten in real life and he gave me permission to react to this. So Waiten, thank you so much. The effort you put into this and finding the data was sick. I know this is gonna help so many people. So I'm really excited to get this out to more folks. And other than that, folks, if you actually want to get SSL now or you're embarrassed or disappointed because you're behind, you came to the right place. Click this video here. We'll get you to SSL in no time. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys.